Good morning. It's Tuesday. Let's see. I think it's the 8th. No, is it the 7th? I'm not sure what day it is of December. And um, how's it going, everybody? Hmm? I'm sitting here in front of my Christmas tree. Now, I will tell you that normally I kind of take charge of the Christmas tree. <laughs> I have these like visions of like beautiful Christmas trees that I see that I think, oh, that's so pretty. And um, so a lot of times I try to take control of the Christmas tree and um, say how I want it to be. Well, of course, this year I say, whatever, whatever you guys want. And my son, he, he, for the first time did the lights all by himself. And when he got the lights done, he said, Hey, what if I just decorate the Christmas tree this year? And I was like, great, go for it. And so he decorates the Christmas tree. He does all the lights. We have these like berries on a cool kind of brown twiggy thing. He puts all those on and then he gets out my favorite ornaments, which are these like kind of mercury balls. Okay. He puts those on and then he finds what else is my favorite. They're these little, they're kind of like coppery mercury looking to these little ones. He puts those on and he says, you know what? I think it's perfect. <laughs> and he says, we're not going to put any other ornaments on the tree this year. And I was like, who are you? <laughs> it's so simple. I love it. And I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> so yeah, it was like, a gift literally just like oh my goodness the one time that I like let go of what I want <laughs> I get exactly what I wanted <laughs> anyway so that's what's been going on around here we are decorated for Christmas I do have my legendary cranberry tea simmering on the stove well not right now because we ran out <laughs> so I need to make another batch but it's just really wonderful. And you know, the crazy thing is, today is actually a little bit overcast, so it kind of feels cold, but it's not cold. It's like supposed to be 82 today, <laughs> which I wanna have like a fire in the fireplace and I can't do it. I'm wearing a sweater, I shouldn't be. <laughs> but hey, <clears throat> that's us this year in California. So not that it's always this warm, but sometimes December is is really really warm so yeah so I read something today about Christmas lists and we are in the midst of a Christmas list because I don't ever know what to do for Christmas for my kids like I don't know if I'm gonna get them something I'd like it to be something that they kind of want you know what I mean sometimes we surprise them but anyway so we're in the midst of, okay, we need to get your Christmas list going because if not, then I can't get them shipped here in time and all that. So I read something today about Christmas lists and it said, when you're young, you make the Christmas list. When you grow up, you fund the Christmas list. And when you get old, you have no idea what to put on the dang Christmas list. And I thought, wow, isn't that true? Isn't that true? Um, I remember not being able to wait for Christmas because that one thing that I wanted or whatever. And now we're in the middle of funding the Christmas list, which is totally fine. But I'm feeling really old because I don't have a clue what to put on the list. <laughs> Are you guys like that? Do you have any clue? And you know, this year more than others, because we can't really give them a trip. We can't really go do something really fun. Um, 
I don't know about you guys, but we are on lockdown again. Yeah, not all parts, not all of California, but a lot of parts of California are on lockdown. We can't really do much besides go for a walk or a run, go to the grocery store, go to the post office, or go to the bank. I think. So, <clears throat> it's it's a very strange year. Um, but the thing that I when I read about the Christmas list, I said the end, it said that the one thing that everybody wants is to feel loved. I thought, you're right. You are right. And so after I read that, I got up and I made breakfast for my family. <laughs> um, I don't always do that. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to make breakfast for my family. So we had French toast and cinnamon apples and I hope that that's one way that I can show them love, you know? So we are talking about love today. And look at, I even poured my coffee into the love mug. <gasps> so coordinating. We're talking about love today. We're talking about love at first sight. Hmm, I wonder if any of you guys have a love at first sight story. Hmm? My husband definitely says it was love at first sight. I don't know if I believe him, but here's the story. This is coming out of A Prairie Devotional. We have made it all the way to chapter 14. Wow, I'm excited. It's one of my favorite stories to tell. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of people ask this when I'm at fan events. So I really, this is a fun story for me. Um, it's from season four, episode 16, I remember, I remember, and this is all about when it's Charles and Carolyn's anniversary, and they're waiting, waiting for Charles to get home, and Ma, I think, made a special meal, and she's waiting, and she's waiting, and she's waiting, and he's late, and he's late, and he's late, and he's late, and whatever, he's driving back from, I don't know, Mankato, or who knows, wherever. And um, she thinks that he forgets. <laughs> he doesn't. But there's a, while they're waiting, Mary says, wants to know how they met and everything. And she says, did you fall in love at first sight? So that's what we're all talking about here. All right, here we go. I used to laugh at the idea of love at first sight. How could love possibly begin in just one glance? My husband disagrees. Josh believes love is a calm sense of assurance that the relationship could be forever if both parties were willing. It was his experience when he first saw me. So how could I argue? Mary Ingalls wanted to hear all about her parents falling in love. She hoped it was instant attraction. I can't speak for Michael Lannon's personal relationships, but as a director, he definitely believed in love at first sight. At the NBC corporate office, Michael took one look at my sister and me and said, those are my girls. He loved us instantly. The crazy thing about God is that he doesn't wait until we're born to start loving us. His love began before the beginning of time. He loves us as no one else could. Carolyn tells Mary how she loved Charles from the moment she saw him. It's just the way God loves you and me, but he does it even better. And the verse is from Psalms 139, 16 and 17. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. So, this Christmas, who can you show that you love? With a Christmas gift, with a yummy breakfast, with whatever it is you have to give, it can be a gift of love. And whether you believe in love at first sight or not, <laughs> I hope that you know that the God of the universe 
loves you before time began. And I want to also say that I love you all. Thank you for supporting me, for hanging out with me on Tuesday mornings. And I hope you have a really wonderful, wonderful day. All right. See ya. Bye.